The Olympians of Greek mythology aren't like the Olympian people we know and love today. These mighty gods didn't take part in the Olympic Games, but rather took center stage in the vast Greek pantheon. In ancient Greece, people worshipped and feared the twelve ruling gods on Mount Olympus that oversaw world affairs and the fate of humanity on Earth. Additionally, they were higher than the other gods and goddesses in the pantheon, with other deities and supernatural beings looking to the Olympian gods for guidance and direction. The Olympian gods had arguably the most pronounced influences over the lives of those in ancient Greece. The twelve gods encompassed nearly all realms of life. So who are these twelve Olympians? Before we get into the video, please subscribe and hit the like. The twelve Olympians ruled from heaven on high, looking down on the mortal realm from Mount Olympus. They were devoted members of the Council of Olympus, which was a divine council that met during uniquely tumultuous times. As far as administrative duties go, Zeus and Hera were the leads of the council. Zeus, the Greek god known to control the power of storms and lightning, which he fashions into a javelin-like weapon to smite his challengers. He is the ultimate supreme deity. Gods and mortals alike have to answer to him, perhaps most well-known today for having a penchant for adultery. Zeus is the father of a veritable number of mortal heroes and great gods. In one of his many famous myths, a young Zeus frees his siblings from the belly of the tyrant Titan, his father Cronus. Zeus and his allies then go on to defeat the Titans in what became known as the Titanomachy. The war's aftermath saw Zeus officially become the king of the heavens and married to his eldest sister Hera. Unfortunately, thanks to Zeus' serial infidelity and Hera's destructive jealousy, the couple didn't have a harmonious marriage. Hera the all-important goddess of marriage and childbirth. She is both the sister and wife of Zeus, which makes her the de facto queen of the gods. The goddess desired a son stronger than Zeus, and her tendency for competition led her to lead an ill-fated coup against her husband. In most myths comparatively, she is the bane of her husband's and his illegitimate children's existence, notably quick to anger and falls into fits of jealousy. This goddess would go to the ends of the earth to ensure the demise of the women in her husband's life. The queen had notably cursed the kind-hearted goddess Leto, the priestess Io, and was the indirect cause of the princess Semele's death. Not to add her continuous attempts to literally murder Zeus's other children until they got on her good side. Poseidon, the god of the sea, water, and earthquakes. As the brother of Demeter, Hades, Hestia, Zeus, and Hera, Poseidon fought in the ten-year-long Titanomachy. He is usually depicted as a bearded gentleman that wields a signature trident. According to myth, Poseidon held a fondness for the Aegean Sea, which was possibly why he so desperately wanted to become the patron of the young city of Athens. He was also known by his Roman name Neptune, who was originally a god of fresh water, as Neptunus prior to 399 BCE. Athena Another god of war, Athena was far more a tactician than her half-brother Ares. This daughter of Zeus was stern and wise. As a champion of heroes, Athena had aided the likes of Hercules, Perseus, and Jason. She was known to award heroic acts with blessings and had direct influence over the noble prowess of Greek heroes in the Trojan War. In Greek mythology, Athena was frequently in opposition to the god Poseidon. She even fought with her uncle over who would become Athens' city god. In the famous dispute, Athena offered the people an olive tree as a gift, which would go on to symbolize peace and prosperity. Ares, everyone's favorite infamous war god. Best known as the ancient Greeks' embodiment of wars, chaos, and destruction, Ares was known to wield a bloody spear and have a terrifying entourage accompany him on the battlefield. He was also famous for an explosive rage that challenged the balance sought by the other Olympians, like his sister. Athena was a wise leader and tactful warrior. Ares represented a more reckless and animalistic approach to warfare. Both siblings were acknowledged aspects of war, but the daughter of Zeus was by far favored, saying that this god of war wasn't all blood and clashing armor. Looking into Ares' love life, he had a love affair with the goddess Aphrodite another one of the twelve great gods of Mount Olympus, the goddess of love and beauty. In one myth, the couple was caught getting together by Hephaestus, 
who ensnared them in an unbreakable net. The god of the forge then called upon the council to offer proof of his wife's infidelity and Ares' bold involvement in an effort to embarrass the lovers out of each other's arms. Aphrodite, the goddess who enjoyed making the love lives of gods and mortals her playthings, with not even the twelve Olympians safe from her influence. Aphrodite has quite an interesting origin story. During the Titanomachy, Zeus castrated his father and threw his father's genitals into the sea. Foam mingled with the blood, which created the goddess of love herself. The only god who would exact revenge on Aphrodite was believed to be Zeus, who had her fall helplessly in love with a mortal. Despite her marriage to Hephaestus, Aphrodite was fully willing to cheat on her husband with other gods, with her most consistent affair being with Ares, the god of war. Hephaestus, the god of forge and fire, but more commonly known as the only ugly god, which is incredibly unusual for the divine Olympians. On top of this, he was bold enough to seek revenge on Hera for casting him out of Olympus when he was born. In this tale, he made her a throne of precious metals, and when she sat on it, he trapped her there. Despite the pleas of the other Olympians, Hephaestus did not budge. He stubbornly proclaimed, I have no mother. Hera remained trapped, and Hephaestus remained unmoved until Dionysus and his festive procession, stopped by his workshop, got him wine drunk, and brought him up to Olympus. Here, he became the patron of craftsmen and worked as the personal blacksmith of the gods. His notable creations include Hermes' signature helmet and sandals, Achilles' armor, Helios' chariot, Eros' bow and arrows, and the bronze automaton Talos. Artemis, the twin sister of Apollo and the daughter of Zeus. Artemis is the goddess of the moon, chastity, vegetation, wild animals, and of the hunt. She is believed by the ancient Greeks to have a silver bow that shot silver arrows, as opposed to her twin Apollo, who had a bow and arrow set made of gold. Apollo, Artemis' twin brother Apollo, was her exact opposite. The god of the sun, light, music, prophecy, medicine, and knowledge. His oracle at Delphi was the most famous of the ancient world. Apollo won a lyre from his mischievous little brother Hermes, and the instrument became irrevocably linked to the god. Apollo was considered the most handsome of the gods. He was cheerful and bright, enjoyed singing, dancing, and drinking, and was immensely popular among both gods and mortals. He also took after his father in the chasing of mortal women, though not always with good success. The river nymph Damphi had her father turn her into a laurel tree rather than succumb to his advances. Hermes, the messenger god, son of Zeus and the Pileade Maya. Not one to dawdle, Hermes left his cradle as soon as he could start getting into trouble. As a young mortal, he first invented the lyre before running off to steal cattle from Apollo's herd. Opposing their incredibly tense relationship at first, Apollo and Hermes are now deemed to be best friends. Apollo went as far as to claim to love no immortal better than Hermes after they reconciled about the events of Hermes' time. Mischievous, woolly, and quick-witted, Hermes can be identified in various artworks by his wearing of winged sandals and a winged hat while carrying the famous Caduceus. Demeter, the middle daughter of the Titans, Cronus and Rhea. Demeter has been thrown into the center of numerous family dramas over the course of time and she proves that Hera isn't the only one of the goddesses that has the ability to lash out, most namely in the myth surrounding the abduction of her daughter Persephone by Hades, the goddess of grain threw the earth into famine from her distress. She refused to listen to the prayers of humans to alleviate their suffering. This act stressed out the king of the gods so much that he tried to mediate the situation with Hades. You can check out how that ended in my video on Hades and Persephone. Dionysus, as the god of wine, winemaking, merriment, theater, and ritual madness, Dionysus was an easy favorite among Olympians and mortals alike. Dionysus was the son of Zeus and Semele, the princess of Thrace, whom Hera tricked into asking to see Zeus in all his glory. Semele could not survive the revelation, but Zeus saved her unborn child by suing him into his thigh. Dionysus was born from the thigh some months later and raised by the nymphs of Nysa. And an honorable mention, Hades, the king of the underworld and god of death. He only left the underworld on occasion of emergencies, 
His position as the god of the dead kept him largely away from Mount Olympus, where the other gods resided. Thus, he isn't considered as an Olympian. He was not welcome among the other gods or mortals, and is usually described as a sour, stern, and unsympathetic individual. Despite this, he caused less trouble than his brother Poseidon, who on one occasion attempted to revolt against Zeus. But despite his sternness and his dark side, Hades also had a soft spot for his wife, Persephone. If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel for more videos like this one.